hello i thought i would do an unboxing of the first oracle deck i have bought this year so this is the wild unknown archetypes deck and guidebook by kim kranz and it's published by harper collins uh, harper one and this deck has been something that i've been wanting for a long time time and i had some birthday money for my 40th birthday and i thought you know what let's do this so it says on the back welcome to the unknown archetypes you will find within 78 circular cards in a round box lavishly illustrated 224 page guidebook from the wellspring of the collective con unconscious emerge images that appear in the dreams of every culture, illuminating our multiplicity and uniting us in the endless story of humanity. These are archetypes. Their limitless potential is yours to behold as you travel through the realm of dreams, visions and myth. May you always be on the inner quest. And this is the box. And I've taken the cellophane off already because I didn't want to mess about taking the cellophane off as well. I've taken the, the, the cover off and then this is the box it comes in and it just opens up like that. That's the inside cover saying accept all, reject none. And the book comes on top. This is the guidebook, which I'll have a look in a second. Oh, that's quite a hefty size guidebook for a deck. And then inside there, you will find a little circular box. The, the illustrations and the colours and the the quality of the boxes and the guidebook are really good and then we've got the back of the deck and we've got all the 78 cards here um this book this oracle decks are one of the ones that i would definitely suggest you read the guidebook and get to know some of the cards i don't particularly suggest that as much with tarot because I think tarot, I feel tarot, for me, tarot is a lot more intuitive. I feel like you can read any deck intuitively anyway. Um, and definitely flick through any guidebook you do get because there's some really good stuff in the front of some of these guidebooks and some important information that you might want to look at. And especially cards like something like this, you might be able to look like with any deck, look at the images and determine what they mean. But I think sometimes with the Oracle decks, you can get some really good meanings in the decks that you want to, in the guidebooks, that you may miss if you don't check out this the guidebook and really study the guidebook before you start reading especially if you're reading for other people you want to be able to read the cards intuitively and not just follow the meanings in the decks because sometimes the readings can come through different than what the traditional meanings of the cards may seem to be and you, you have, i always believe that you get the message that you're meant to get and you give the message you're meant to give Anyway, let's go through these cards, shall we? We've got the mother, the father, the starborn, the eternal child, the orphan, the mentor, the poet. The maiden, the hunter, the warrior, 
the queen, the king, the crown, the judge, the shapeshifter, mm -hmm. the shaman, the lover, the siren. Oh, and these images beautiful. The animal, the pilgrim, the mystique. They're quite good quality cards as well. The creator, the destroyer, the sustainer, the healer, the comic. The unseen, the shadow, the self, the one, the heart, the cave, the mountain, the river, the ocean, the forest, the desert, the bridge. The temple, the dead end, the village, the empty room, the castle, the box, the threshold, the womb, the storm, the underworld, the fault line. The Bardo, the Flame, the Tear. It almost feels like there's two cards stuck together some of the times on here. Um, most of the way through the deck, it feels like one card is like two. Because um, the card quality is really good. The Riddle, the Vow. The vision, the gem, the ring, the nectar, the medallion, the kiss, the mask, the sword, the venom, the offspring, the prayer, the seed. The stone, the mirror, the vessel, <coughs> excuse me, the thread, eros, agape, thanatos, Apocalypse, Gnosis, Kairos, Althenia, and Anime Mundi. So those are your 78 cards I say really good quality cards um, quite big so shuffling them might be say I don't think I could shuffle them that way like I would normally with the rectangular cards shuffling them might be difficult especially if you have some smaller hands you might want to find a way to shuffle them differently and there's loads of ways you can shuffle your cards now this is the book this guidebook is really good quality it's not like really thin paper oh, just the smell of those books though um 
and it's all listed at the front here about like the salves, the places, the tools, the initiations. And some information there at the beginning that they have wrote down that I won't read to you. I think you should, you know, if you're going to buy the deck, you can you buy it. Um, take a look for yourself. It talks about there's, there's a sphere, s sphere of influence. And then talking about the archetypes, the origin of the archetypes and the territory. Um, the qualities of the archetypes, their initiations. Archetypes versus stereotypes. The sacred pairs and the trifectas, like the mother, father, the crow and the shaman. That kind of stuff. Um, the missing hero. And then a little bit about understanding the deck. So what the salves, the places, the tools and the initiations mean. And to help you... Real, it really seems to be going in depth to help you to learn the deck. Which is why I say that with Oracle decks... Or this in this particular Oracle deck... Reading the book was really important to actually study and to learn and to get to know the archetypes because some of the cards may not be as intuitive as or you might not get the full message at first when you first get to, getting to know the card. And I do feel like going through the card individually like I've just done and really getting to know the cards is really important, especially if you're reading for other people. And it talks a bit about what to do before you begin, using the images for inspiration, which I've mentioned, um, pulling cards. There's a few spreads here, the three card spread for summoning the divine. The Inner Quest spread. The Access Mundi spread. So you can learn as well by pulling, using these spreads for yourself and really getting to know the cards. And a lot of people as well ask the, pull the cards, ask questions to the cards and asking the card questions. The cards questions, the deck and general questions to ask the deck what their their purpose is why they're drawn to you what your what sort of messages you're going to get from the deck and to get to asking various questions to the deck to get to know it in general so this one's the heroine's journey or the hero's journey or the the i'm struggling to find a non-binary version of the heroine hero's journey the the story the story journey you know you get the journey of some kind the protagonist there you go the protagonist's journey talking about the card rotations and about, and what they mean when they come out if you do that kind of thing and if you want to read them upside down sideways or whatever and some final thoughts here that this person has wrote down. And then it goes into each of the cards, helping you to get to know the cards all the way to the end of the book. For instance, we've got the mother here and it says the name of the card the great mother the feminine and the source at the bottom it says when light glowing generative creative and nurturing when dark dim exhausted controlling and limiting and it says go deeper read teo Tichengs chapter one and the image of the mother of a thousand things to help you go deeper to each archetype it gives you um a book of some kind or a chapter of a book 
to read to help you to get to know the archetype a little bit better, which I think is really good. It really feels amazing that does to have that. And you've got then the side words here, the bit in black says, notice how the mother archetype is expressed in nature. This is perhaps the most balanced and benevolent form of the mother's grace. And then this side says, the mother is part of the trifecta, maiden, mother and crown. Because of the relationship between them, take special note when these cards appear in one reading. As if there's just there's a trifecta going on, it's the maiden, the mother and the crown. It's a journey of life of the mother. Um or the the mother being the feminine type the feminine energy type regardless of gender um and it talks a little bit about the card here i'll read this one to you and then the rest is all here it says we begin our archetypal journey with the mother's love through her sensual fertile and life-giving energy all creation takes form, regardless of our birth story. Each of our hearts beat for the first time in the warm womb of the mother, where she offered resources from her body for the building of our own. Yet her tale is not so simple, as the mother, especially on the earthly plane, contains both light and dark aspects of the feminine. Within the best of intentions, the mother wraps her loving arms around her creations and begins to grip what she meant to set free. The mother nurtures and prohibits growth. She gives yet clings. She creates yet restricts. Amid this complex energy, the mother holds the key to eternal challenges of love. Um, and does kind of make me cringe a little bit about the non the using the the mother and not having the non-binary options there and i understand why because um but in this day and age we could do without that but it it is what it is that is just the way it it is in this deck I've actually got a tarot card coming. I will put a link in the description box below when I've done the reading, the unboxing for that one too. Which is a tarot deck that was created by this amazing person who has created this tarot deck with without gender specific cards. So they have adapted the gender specific cards in a tarot deck and made them more inclusive and non-binary inclusive and inclusive for everybody, regardless of how you identify. And I had to buy that deck when I saw George Lizos um, did an interview with this person on his YouTube channel. And I... I saw this interview with him discussing this deck and I knew instantly I had to buy it. So that will be coming soon. I'll put the description and the links I've mentioned in the description box below. And thank you for watching. I will be back soon with my next unboxing and video. Bye.